What's up guys, Crazy HD here, and today I'm bringing you guys a video on why I think Homefront The Revolution is the most underrated game of 2016. So, I'm going to bring you a couple points and then you can decide for yourself. Obviously, this is an opinionated video and you do not have to agree with me. If you do not like the game, that's fine. Comment down below why you do not like it, why you disagree with me, but please be respectful. I understand that you don't agree with me, but there's no need to get hostile or anything. So please just be respectful in the comments. Um, so anyway, um, there's a couple reasons. I don't know how many I have. I'm just going to kind of ramble them off and then we'll see how many that is. So number one, the accuracy of where things are and how things look. As somebody from Philly, I really appreciate that because we haven't been featured in a game in a while and it's very, very accurate. Um, I, I The one thing I will specifically point out is the Navy Yard. Um, it's right where it should be, um, and you can see the like the the huge boxes, or not boxes, the huge cranes and stuff, and then you're, you're working on a ship. Um, and there's a ton of ships at the Navy Yard, and I mean, obviously they're not going to use the same ships because North Korea took over America, why would they keep American, old American ships? Um, but that's one of the cool things that I really noticed and I really appreciated as a Philadelphia, uh, a citizen from outside of Philadelphia who spent a lot of my life in Philadelphia. Um, there's other landmarks that are there um, that I've seen in other videos, but I haven't specifically seen for myself, so I won't be able to tell you guys how accurate those are. But the one thing I really did notice was the Navy Yard. So, number two, a lot of people complain about the glitches, but you gotta realize an open world game is gonna have a lot of glitches. If you ever looked into how an open world game is made, it's bound to have glitches. They take years to make. The only reason Ubisoft can pump them out year after year is because of them having the same engine. And I don't remember who developed uh, Homefront the Revolution. I'll actually look it up while I'm doing this video. Um, let's see. Um, but regardless, Actually, it was probably Ubisoft anyway. Um, no, it was Deep Silver. Okay. Um, so, Deep Silver isn't a company that has an engine made for specifically open world games, as far as I know, already prepared uh, for other games. So, it's not like where the developers like Bethesda, um, for example, for Fallout 4, Bethesda used the same engine just an upgraded version of it that they use for Skyrim. So that's just one example. Uh, Ubisoft does it all the time with all their open world games. Um, and they just change it around. And a lot of there's a lot of research that goes into it, and that's what a lot of the time is spent on, on the open world games. And you can tell that they did their research because of, of where buildings are, the sections and stuff, and stuff like that. So it's bound to have glitches because of the coding and everything with how much work is involved, but they have done an excellent job in patching known glitches. I found one glitch the other day where it was just a guy, or it was just a gun and a, a hat, like a, a beanie I guess it was. I think that's what it was. I don't remember specifically, but I just remember and I couldn't walk through it, but um, that was one of the glitches I did find. So another thing that a lot of people complain about is it's kind of confusing with some of the gameplay. Um, when you realize, when you look into it and you realize how it actually works, if you have to parkour something or find your way around something, it's marked blue. Um, it's blue spray paint, blue tarp, something like that. So if you have to jump on something, it's marked blue. Um, if you have to shoot something down, it's marked blue. I spent an hour on a mission the other day. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't find the, the, I think it was the manual for like a Goliath or something. You guys will know what I'm talking about if you played the game and you're pretty far into it. Um, it was the manual for the Goliath and I couldn't find it and then I realized, oh, I gotta look up and shoot the ceiling tile. Um, so, and there's like a crosshair on it if you have to shoot it. So, that that's, some of the gameplay is confusing and I will admit that, but it, once you get past that, once you, if you're able to get past that, then it's a good game. The gameplay is actually pretty fun. You gotta try to avoid getting spotted by KPA or Norks or whatever you wanna call them. 
um, or their scanners or their robots and stuff like that. You gotta try to avoid getting spotted by them or else you'll have to get into combat. You're not handed ammo. I mean, every time you kill somebody, they drop a little bit of ammo, but you're not like handed all these loot crates and stuff. I mean, there is a, a bunch of strongholds around the map that you can get am ammo and you can buy stuff, but it's more fun to play where you have to find it and stuff. So, that's my opinion. Um, honestly, I think if you can get past all the glitches, which honestly for me, I haven't had too many glitches. I, I mean, I've had a couple times where I couldn't go somewhere because apparently there's an invisible person standing there, but other than that, I haven't really had that many bad glitches. So, if you can get past the glitches you can, and just focus on the gameplay, it's pretty solid. Um, it's not very repetitive, um, unless you keep running into KPA or North or whatever you call them. Um, and then it gets repetitive, but there's some stealth missions, there's some... You have to jump over some walls sometimes on the motorcycles. There's a lot of different ways to complete missions. So, honestly, if you haven't given it a shot since it first came out, or if you haven't given it a shot at all, I'd recommend giving it another shot. If you still don't like it, alright, but... I honestly don't think you should judge the game by its like first couple weeks of release because I did that and I'm having so much fun playing this game recently. So honestly I recommend going back to it, um, but that's up to you guys. So comment down below if you agree or disagree with my points that I made in this video. But that's going to do it for this video guys, comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, be in the description below. As always guys, I'm Crazy HD. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, have a great day. See ya.